you know, how many people still call it Xerox, you know, I'm going to Xerox it, it, whether it's a Minolta <laughs> or it doesn't matter. They use that term. Yeah. It's like I Google stuff on Yahoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax. HIPAA help is on the way. Hello and welcome to another Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims. I am from HIPAA for MSPs. And joining me as always is my co-host Donna Grindle from Cardin Compliance. How's it going today, Donna? It's going well, David. How are you? You, you, you sound so enthusiastic. <laughs> it's kind of a dreary day. You know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know exactly when this will come out, but as of right now, there's ice all over the ground outside and and we're bracing for a winter storm surge so that's always fun yeah but we'll try to be upbeat and energetic (laughs) (laughs) so today we're going to get into a topic that is pretty interesting in that i think it's uh, a topic that people need to listen to (laughs) and, and need to pay attention to but it's also kind of um it's not really fun to do it so, and what I'm talking about is finding out where your PHI is in your organization, because that can be a challenge. And the reason we want to talk about that today is because there's some audit protocol instructions for risk analysis that came out, and we'll link to it on our on our website. But within that protocol, it says, and I'll read it word for word, it says that a practice should obtain and review relevant documentation and evaluate the content relative to the specified criteria for an assessment of potential risk and vulnerabilities of EPHI. And it goes on to say that you also have to determine if the covered entity has identified all systems that contain, process, or transmit EPHI. So it's clear that the audit protocol, if they come out and have to audit you for any reason, uh, the audit protocol states that they must find out if you've done these steps. And so we kind of want to talk about that today and and look at some of the places where your PHI might be so that it can help you uh, find it. Well, yeah, and this is, I mean, these are the instructions to the auditor. So I always love how, how you know, it's written in uh, such great stuff where it starts with inquire of management as to whether formal <laughs> or informal practices or policies exist. So it's interesting read and, um, uh, they're due any time to come out with a new audit protocol when the audits start. And, um, and, and I do expect that to happen soon. They, you know, in September, they picked an audit company to do these audits and some of them will be on site and some of them will be desk audits. And mm-hmm. so this, the fact that so many cases in the original test audits back in 2012, I think. Oh my word. And, uh, and then all of the resolutions, they find that risk analysis weren't done. You know, this is going to be part of any audit. So mm-hmm. the important piece there, you know, we talk about doing a risk analysis all the time. And, you know, a lot of people will do these risk analysis and it's just like a checklist and they run some stuff on the systems, but they don't really identify every single place that PHI exists. And if you mm-hmm. don't do that, then how can you be sure you're protecting it if you don't know it's there? Right. So that's what we're talking about today is have you determined all systems that contain, process, or transmit PHI? And I'm sure we have some stories to go along with these. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we like to make it real world, keeping it real up in yep. here. But, you know, we tell people we, we have all these tools and uh, uh, trackers and stuff that we use just trying to ask lots and lots of questions. So mm-hmm. we're kind of like trying to be what the uh, the pre-auditor audit people. And yeah. you got to start from the beginning and just walk around and look and see everywhere that people are talking about PHI, collecting it or using it where you're storing it, how's it moving around your organization, what other organizations are you connected to that you're sharing data. That's a huge one that gets lost a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, as always, it all must be documented. 
Dun, dun, dun. That's right. Documentation, documentation, documentation. Yep. If you don't document it, it didn't happen. That's right. You need to document that you are going to document everything and when you had the conversation about documentation <laughs> and how you'll be doing the documentation should be documented. So, hold on. I got I to write that out on a chart. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did a circle there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one would take a while. So this is going to be kind of fun because it's almost like playing PHI hide and seek. Yeah. Trying to figure out where this stuff is. And, and the larger your organization is, kind of the harder this would probably be in some cases because <laughs> no matter how many times you tell employees, you know, don't save that stuff on your desktop or don't put it on a thumb drive or somebody's going to do it just because it's simple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, it's just easier if I just save it here, not where I should do it. You know, or I'll come back to it and move it later uh, or something like that. So uh, that's always a challenge. But where would you start? So where do you want somebody to start when they're looking for the PHI? Where is it created or transmitted or received? All that good stuff. Well, there's two ways that you go about it. Number one, you know, it's our favorite way that people you know, try to make things complicated. Uh, we ask them, ask people, <laughs> just, hey, what do you do? There's no right or wrong. Just need to know what you do. And we have, uh, we've finally just, we created a form that you, uh, have people fill out a survey more or less of, you know, tell me all the places that you access or store or create PHI and send it out to the, particularly you want to do it to all the clinicians because, you know, the, your billing staff or the people that work in the office all the time, and they have one space that they're working at, you can really easily assess what they're doing most of the time. They're not doing the stuff, but you look at your providers, they're moving around. And they may be at a hospital, they may be somewhere else. Or you look at like field techs who have access to things uh, in the offices that you may not know about. And they may decide to store things on places you don't know about that they're doing. So you've got to ask all those questions from the people. So create some way of surveying your people and you'll be surprised what you learn. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> I did not know that you were doing that. I did not know that that was even set up for you. Oh, well, yeah, I had so-and-so set it up. Well, you know what? So-and-so is not supposed to set that up unless I okay it. And I never okayed it. Well, now I've got, I found another policy issue, yeah. controls and stuff, but it, it happens quite often that people are using your technology and accessing your PHI to do their jobs in a way that you had no idea it was happening. Because, you know, we set out a plan and then we go on and do our job and we come back and we're like, you're not doing it any of the ways that I said to do it. (laughs) And I wrote it down even. So you've got to start by asking people. But then the next step is really to walk in the front door of your office. Start right there and then walk in the back door and start from that end. And you look around during the day when things are taking place and you look around during off hours when nothing's taking place and you figure out what's happening. So if you look over and you see somebody that's uh, bringing in lab charts, uh, they're pulling information down from a lab and importing it into your EHR. Maybe, oh, I should document how that's happening. Is it secure? Do we have a vendor that's taking care of that? So you got to look at all of those pieces walking through the office with the intent of, can I get to some PHI that I'm not supposed to be able to see? Or can I identify something new in the office that I haven't got on my list already to Mm -hmm. go through? But mostly you, you get so much just from listening to people talk. And then making a list of certain things. So kind of put together a list here of uh, areas that people often forget that we can go through. And, uh, of course, the big ones are fax machines and copiers and fax copier Mm. printers. Uh, people don't get it. <laughs> that yeah, they're let's digital. have a conversation about this one for sure. <laughs> it, yeah, because it's, first of all, the whole copier technology has changed over the past, I don't know, 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, used to, you threw something on the copier and you pressed print and or copy or whatever, and it copied it, shot the piece of paper out, and that was it. 
but nowadays they have hard drives in them. Yes. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I remember a long time ago, I'm going to tell my age here, but we had a risograph, <laughs> and the risograph machine would make an image of whatever you put on it to scan or to copy, and it would it would physically be like on a drum inside there. So it would make co- multiple copies over and over and over again, but that image stayed on a, a film reel uh, inside that drum. So, you know, they, they've moved away from that the hardware type of imaging and and went into digital. Mm-hmm. So now everything's now everything's stored uh, internally on a hard drive. So if you've got a copy machine, you can't just make copies of stuff that have PHI on there and then allow somebody else to come in and, and you know either work on that equipment or or trade up. You know, the, somebody's going to come in and roll that out and bring you something else. Uh, you need to understand that still has a lot of data on it. Well, yeah, and uh, there was a uh, a CBS news story a while back. A couple of years yeah, ago. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, trying to get people, and people still don't get this, and it, you know it's still happening. And there's a lot of uh, confusion about it sometimes about what you're going to do. But people lease these copiers, mm-hmm. and they're not just copiers anymore. You know, it's that giant machine. It's a fax. It's a copier. It's a printer. It's a scan. It does everything. And these things are computers, and people don't get that. Oh, that's just a copier. It's you know, you know, how many people still call it Xerox? You know, I'm going to Xerox it, it, whether it's a Minolta <laughs> or it doesn't matter. They use that term. Yeah, it's like I Google stuff on Yahoo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so people forget that these things you log into them and configure them and they connect to your network and they have all of this data on them coming and going. So PHI, you copy something, let's say you scan something and you say, I'm going to scan this to a network drive somewhere. This is a pretty common thing Mm -hmm. or worse. I'm going to scan this to email and it's configured to go to a Gmail account, but I'm I'm not going to go there. I'm glad you go in there (laughs) because I was going to go there if you did. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but either way, in order for it to do that, it digitizes that image and puts it on its own hard drive and then sends it somewhere, whether it's faxing it, uh, putting it on paper, or sending it to a uh, uh, hard drive somewhere else on the network. So it creates a digital copy, that same thing you're looking at that you get as a result of uh, using the machine, it's stored inside it. So then it becomes twofold open space because there's PHI sitting on this thing that everybody forgets about and you can log into it and access all kinds of things on it and everybody forgets about that. Yeah. And in some cases, your vendor can log into it. Yeah. And, and they can, you know, oh, the hard drive failed. Let me just take this one out and we'll see if we can recover it. I'll take it with me. Whoa, 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 Bessie. Yeah. No, you won't. Yeah. <laughs> So it's a huge thing that you should be aware of all of those, you know, fax, copy, or printers. And just for those who didn't know about the CBS story is that a hospital had uh, leased a ton of these devices, and then they traded them in on the lease and got new ones, and no one cleared the drives. So Mm -hmm. they go to this huge warehouse where it's uh, refurbished, if you will, uh, you can buy used copiers, and CBS News goes and just buys random number of copiers and brings in a tech person to check them all. Now, at least the uh, healthcare ones weren't as bad as the police station one. They, they, some of them were from a police station. You open it up, and there's somebody's criminal record that had been. It was still in the the paper. Was in the thing. They, they <laughs> turned it in with the paper, in it. but they pulled all kinds of PHI off of these things, and it is a major issue. So. You have to make sure you're aware PHI is on those devices. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so account for them. Make sure you, you put those in your risk analysis. And I'm working on a, an episode some, on how hackers get in. And uh, just so you know, one of the hackers uh, was talking about, I couldn't get into anything, and then I found the you know golden ticket. It was a copier that uh, mm-hmm. wasn't secured. So there you have it. Yeah. I mean, I even saw, of course, this is TV, but that's sometimes not far from the truth. <laughs> I saw a guy hack into a network because there was a, a vending machine mm-hmm. on the network and they hacked the vending machine mm-hmm. and got into everything else. And, that, and that's part of it is, you know, your vulnerabilities. If I've got PHI traveling across my network, 
what other devices are on there, and that's another piece. That's a vulnerability to the PHI on your network is these IoT, Internet of Things. That's kind of that we talked about in another episode. Yeah, or letting your visitors in your lobby log into your wireless network yeah. that may be on the same <laughs> network mm-hmm. as your PHI. Yeah, there's all kinds of ways that that can be a problem. So that's why we go around and this is why we do a risk analysis. So where else should you look for PHI? One of the things that uh, <laughs> a big breach happened because a company was, as they would replace, get rid of machines, they were doing the right thing. They were taking the hard drives out, right? Mm-hmm. And storing them somewhere <laughs> they shouldn't. And a closet. So they're storing them in a closet, and then they forget they're in there, and they move. And uh, <laughs> Well, you know, personally, I had my uh, information breached because of the local Ambulance service did something very similar. Mm-hmm. They had hard drives they, I'm assuming, took out of machines, but they had hard drives stored in a safe as well as thumb drives and all that. And at some point, someone noticed that they were all gone. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who ate the last Oreo? <laughs> yeah. So uh, they had to send out some uh, notifications. So I got a notification in the mail that because I had been in an ambulance ride a few years earlier, uh, my data was now stolen. See, off it goes. <laughs> but yeah, so closets. Closets. So look in your closets. Uh, you know, you never know what you're going to find in a closet. And, uh, the, you know, the uh, other piece is where do I interface? And that's I kind of touched on that a little bit earlier, but interfaces is a, that's a technical term, you know, that we talk about. But some of the areas that people forget to identify and look for, are we securing it? Things like, yeah, your lab interfaces. But what about, do you use a collections firm or are you a collections firm? And you're sending and receiving this information between your business partners. How is that being secured? Are you sending only the minimum necessary? So you, you need to ask all those questions about each and every case of where things are moving around. Because if you don't address it and you just assume, well, we know what assume means. <laughs> but you got to evaluate all of those. And, you know, the big thing that everybody in healthcare is talking about, which is another episode I'm working on, is interoperability. It's the thing. It's going to be the thing from now on until we actually attain it. Interoperability, new buzzword. It's going to take over the meaningful use buzzword, and it's going to become interoperability. So when you look at that, that's only going to increase the amount of data flying around between systems. So even if, let's say, uh, and there are some practices that have, they have a practice management system, and then they have an EHR system that's standalone because of uh, the way that they uh, need things to work in their office. And those two systems talk to each other. Well, how is that secured? Can you tell me how that's secured? Because that is a key component of the uh, transactions that are flying around my office. So is that something somebody can listen to and, and pull out? And uh, so you got to question all of those interfaces and, and include that as one of the items. Because remember, we're supposed to say, does it contain it, process it, or transmit it? And all of those things are taking place in those interfaces. Mm -hmm. And then here's our favorite one, a cloud vendor. (laughs) It doesn't apply to them. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) My EHR, I do everything in the cloud, so I don't have to do HIPAA. I don't have to worry about security. I don't have to encrypt. I'm good. It's all in the cloud. uh, (laughs) (laughs) You know, this is one, you know, uh, I'm trying to keep my soapbox away this week. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but you know this is one that drives me nuts because cloud vendors either don't realize that what they're telling people or they do realize i'm not sure which but (laughs) i mean they'll tell people oh you don't have to worry about your compliance we've got all that taken care of because we have your data Mm -hmm. it drives me nuts because there's no way they have all your data because (laughs) it's just not possible uh and and even if they do have all your data that still doesn't circumvent all the other things that that compliance entails, like policies and procedures and risk analysis and everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, 
was uh, doing a presentation uh, in front a, a cloud vendor's customer base talking about doing a risk analysis and how important it is. And and so you ask everybody in the room, do you store PHI on your individual devices? And nobody, it, it, there, no, you know, does anybody do that? Raise your hand. Not a hand comes up. Nope. Not on my individual desktops, not on my laptops. I do not store PHI. I said, how many people run reports out of this application, then download it to work on it in a spreadsheet? The whole room, hands go up. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, uh, PHI is going down to your desktop when you do that. It's going somewhere because the word download (laughs) means it's coming down to your devices. So, you know, even some of the team, uh, the developers looked around like, wow, people don't get this. We did not know. They did not know. You don't know what yeah. you don't know. <laughs> or the doctor sends a text to the person at the front desk and says, you know, I need information on Susie Q's deployment at 2 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and then they text it back to them. Yeah. And y- yeah. That's uh, why you ask the providers, how do you communicate when you need information? That's another question to ask. So... It's, it's always important to, well, at least to try to have a conversation about how information exchanges. So if mm-hmm. you ask the providers, they won't mention that text maybe, but you ask the person that the providers are going to ask to do things and you say, how do they communicate with you? How do they tell you these things? And then that's where you're going to start getting that kind of information. So that's why you have to ask. Because people just won't think about it. They're just busy doing their job, taking care of patients. And and again, I mean, we're not trying to interfere with patient care. We are trying to make sure that while we do patient care, we're not making mistakes that can not be caring for the patient. You're messing up their data. So that's a big yeah, thing. It's, it's to improve patient care. That's right. Ultimately. Ultimately. So, yeah, that's the whole texting thing is... Uh, uh, I guess misunderstood yeah. by some people. And of course, you can text with a encrypted texting solution. So it's not that you can't do it. You just have to write, have to write things in place. Right. But um, he, I had a doctor one time say, well, I've always done this and it's never been a problem. Why is it a problem now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, no. it's always been a problem. Nobody's just told you. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, yeah. Because I've always done it does not mean that it was always okay that you were doing it. Yeah. yeah. Just be, yeah, like I tell like I tell my uh, my employee all the time, just because you can doesn't mean you should. That's right. And just because you got away with it before doesn't mean you'll ever get away with it again. Mm-hmm. But that is a perfect segue into the the next piece, which was to talk about phones and tablets. Is you, you know we get all these apps and stuff, and everybody's all excited about apps that they can use, and and certainly we do want you to not send text, plain old SMS messages. That's not secure. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that people forget about there's so many ways that that can be, uh, 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 used and, and will continue to be, uh, tapped into more often as people live and breathe by that now. So if you have any kind of, uh, device that you want to exchange this information, then you've got to make sure that you identify, okay, We're going to use such and such an app, and it's going to provide the secure text messaging, but you need to have in your documentation why you think this is secure, you Mm -hmm. know, and also the nightmare for people that are in tech is what's called shadow IT. (laughs) It's, you know, people that are have tech savvy, so they decide they're going to put their own apps in and implement it amongst the group, and nobody tells anybody about security concerns or anything. They don't evaluate it. They just think it's cool, and it solves a work problem. So we're, we're going to implement it because we don't want to wait on all this other stuff you got to get done. We want to use it right now. Well, the reason that you have to wait is because you're opening up a big hole potentially. So if they have are using apps and you don't know how they're being secured, you don't know what they're storing on the individual devices, and are those individual devices encrypted? So that's why you have to ask those questions. Are they leaving voice memos? Does it have contact details? Are all of these things hanging out on these tablets and phones that people use? Mm -hmm. So another place to evaluate. Do you have PHI in those areas? Don't 
just assume. You got to start asking those questions and looking at what are people actually using, not what you've given them. Yeah, in my in my IT business, we're we're dealing with a client right now that we just found out uh, was using or is using iPads to take pictures of uh, before and after client stuff and all that. And so, oh. uh, <laughs> and let me guess, they've got it syncing to iCloud. Um, no, I don't. Well, you know what? I, I don't even know that, honestly, at this point, because this is something that just came up yesterday. Um, but th- they're wanting to have access to the data anywhere, so they want to be able to find somewhere in the cloud they can push that data to. But the point is, there was there was not a conversation with their IT company, which was my company. <laughs> There's not a conversation about the fact that they were adding these iPads for this particular function of taking these pictures and and using them for marketing and some other things you're doing, but you know, some of it's just not marketing, but just putting it in our charts. But still, there was no conversation about that. Currently, there's iPads floating around now that are not encrypted. They're not monitored. They can be, easily be lost or stolen. So it's a huge concern mm-hmm. that um, that you know we've got to deal with that before it becomes a problem. And, and that just goes to show that they weren't thinking about it at all. The only reason that it even got brought up is because they were wondering how they could get that information somewhere where they could access it in the cloud. And that's the only reason that even came up. Well, and that's why you're supposed to do a risk analysis whenever you make changes. Make changes. <laughs> and, and that's a change. I'm adding in a whole new process with technology. I'm upgrading. I'm changing my technology to use new tools, and those are major changes. If you're converting to a new type of application or adding in a new function into your technology, you're supposed to do a risk analysis, and mm-hmm. that would include identify where the PHI is, where is it going to move, how is it going to be stored, all of those kind of things, exactly like you're talking about. So, yeah, people have got to get into – the mindset that, you know, when we were at the uh, health IT leadership conference and they had the students walking around and, and the students were all uh, tasked with developing these apps and they, you, you know, they, some of them did a great job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They well, did. all of them actually. And they start their middle school through college. They're doing some great stuff, but you ask all of them and I say, did they ask you to think about security at all? And none of them. So they don't want you to think about security from the beginning. And you really have to change that mindset to think about security from the beginning instead of on the back end. And mm-hmm. uh, security should be something that they're aware of from the beginning of any kind of concept or design. It should be an element. Mm-hmm. And while these kids shouldn't have necessarily been able to figure out the security elements, it should be an item on their to-do list or their project plan or their concepts of how it's secured and uh, nothing, not a, not even discussed. Yeah. So if that's not happening, you could get some really cool new app where security has been the, Hey, we're ready to get this out. Has anybody thought about security? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you want to talk so, to your IT people. Oh yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah, at least talk to them. But, uh, so that another thing too that your IT company can help you with is is not just that aspect of it, but how are you going to uh, remove that data from your systems? You know whether you're taking a system offline or replacing it, or your drive fail. You know, like we referred to earlier, what do you do if the hard drive fails? You know, you don't just take it out and throw it in the trash. Right. Um, so you you know you have to talk about how are you going to handle that PHI once you need it removed. Uh, from a system. And that, yeah, that's part of identify where your PHI is when you're going to get rid of things. Mm -hmm. Is the PHI still on the devices when we're getting rid of them? And if so, what are we doing with them? That needs to be part of your, where does my PHI live? Where, oh, where is the PHI? Mm -hmm. So it can be still hanging out on retired devices that whether you know it or not, it's still there and you can get to it. So knowing that, okay, well, once the we get to the end of life here, these get moved over to here. You need to know that, where they're going next. So that's part of identifying where it's going and knowing where it lives. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, this is kind of one that gets lost sometimes. 
a uh, paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're still dealing with paper, yeah. right? Well, you know, everybody uh, talks about the security rule is supposed to do the risk analysis about EPHI. And I try to encourage people to look at paper. You know, you have conversations all the time. I'm a big proponent of paperless uh, functionality. I, I don't like to print things, but we both know people will just print everything because they need to touch things. Some people need that. They need something in their hands to be able to work with something and they can't just do it on the screen. So, you know, there's a million reasons that paper's generated and because we get so focused on the technology, we forget that those copiers and printers uh, are actually creating new pieces of information that need to be addressed. So there's plenty of cases of breaches involving paper. And it's because no Mm -hmm. one's thinking about it. No one's going around and looking for the paper. And I think you should include it. Yeah, there was actually a a rash pretty much in 2015 of paper documents that just, for some reason, ended up in dumpsters all over America. Yeah, that uh, 2015, (laughs) well, the 2015 uh, breach where we discuss what happened in the end of 2015. Yeah, with the uh, paper on the roadway. The paper just identified flying paper. In two different parts of the country. I mean, how does, how does that happen? You know, so people forget about paper or they assume that paper is going to be taken care of properly and they're not checking on that. You know, the number of times that we go in and we find, you know, piles of things to be shredded that aren't locked. They're not controlled in any way. And everybody's like, it's no big deal. You know, it's just, it's good. The shredding company is going to show up. There's so many gaps there because, Mm -hmm. you know, there's cases where uh, cleaning companies were taking all of that stuff to be shredded, pulling out half of it every night, leaving half of it, and no one was noticing. I mean, how do you notice? Because it's not locked. Your your trash can got hacked. (laughs) It's not locked. You know, there's nothing there. Just take some with them, and they're still in some... uh, you know, some PHI Mm -hmm. and you you get a little bit every day and in a week you're sitting pretty because these people, they don't lock the shredding bins. They don't get it picked up except for once a week and it's unlocked that whole time. You could be taking stuff out of that every day. Yep. And we do not do a risk analysis looking for what if everything goes right. (laughs) What if everybody's honest and everything goes right? That's not what a risk analysis is supposed to do. And that's what, you know, you bring something up and people are like, oh, well, that's not going to happen. But that's not what we're planning for. We're not planning for you to be right about that. You don't want to be the one that said, well, I, I didn't think that would ever happen because a lot of people think that. that that's part of your lack of risk analysis. Yeah. You don't see it as a risk. <laughs> There's no risk. So. There you have it. All right. So good. So there's some things for uh, everybody to do. Some homework assignments there. (laughs) Get started. Off you go now. Start at the front. Start at the back. (laughs) We'll meet you in the middle. (laughs) We'll discuss it. There you go. So very good. So, all right. So that's our show for today. And uh, we thank you for listening as always. And you can find us on iTunes if uh, you didn't find us there. You can also get to us on our website. We also would appreciate if you share this out on social media. And our website is helpmewithhippa.com. And there's even a little speak pipe widget there that you can leave us a voicemail message right on our homepage. And we might even feature that in a future podcast. So for myself and Donna, remember, HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims, the show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhippa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.